dissatisfied with the stereotypes and alleged blackmail, the Arewa Consultative Forum says the North will not allow itself to be blackmailed anymore and neither is it afraid of the country's breakup. The forum in a statement warns that gone are the days when northerners felt blackmailed and intimidated by threats of restructuring, secession or breakup of Nigeria. The ACF also says the North is not and has never been opposed to the election of any Nigerian from any part of the country as president, maintaining, however, that anything that will be done to achieve that must be in accordance with the laws of Nigeria and democratic principles. Now, this comes as Southeast leaders uh, Southern and Middlebed leaders are all clamoring for the presidency to be zoned to the region. They say the quest for an Igbo presidency in 2023 is morally and historically justifiable. Well, for more on this, I'm glad to be joined in the studio by Professor Chasma Kiaku, who is the secretary of the Igbo Elders Consultative Forum, and he joins us right away. Uh, Prof, let's talk about how the ACF seems to be replying to all your statements alongside with the Southern Middle Belt <laughs> Elders Forum, uh, Leaders Forum that have been meeting. Mm. The North says it's not afraid of Nigeria breaking up because the Southern leaders have been breathing over its neck. What do you have to say? <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, I don't think any person is intimidating the North. We are actually, we are actually saying the obvious. We are saying uh, Northern Elders Forum. We are all witnesses here that a number of times in 2015 you said that it was the turn of the North to produce the president and we supported them. And so we are saying that look for the sake of equity, fairness and justice they should support us and it is not only this time. If we go down the memory lane as I said before for the sake of repeating myself you remember before independence, Chief Anthony Anahara moved a motion for self-independence. The North wasn't ready. And as I said, I've said it before, I'll briefly say that, the North wasn't ready. But for the sake of peace, unity and progress, and equity, the South agreed to wait for the North. It was actually Dr. Namdi Azikwe that said, look, appeal to the west. You know we had three regions then. Western region, eastern region, and northern region. We waited for the north. That was a great sacrifice. I want to say again that even in 19, 1999, you remember what happened? That one, well, southwest, after the cancellation of uh, June 12, uh, yes, June 12 1993 presidential election. They also accepted that were for the sake of equity, justice, and fairness. That in 1999, you know, it was a son of Igbo man, His Excellency, Dr. Alessi, who was a former vice president, that formed Group 34, that eventually metamorphosed uh, into PDP. The G34, he, yes, as he was it set. Then. He was set to pick the presidential ticket, but other Nigerians, champion by the North, said, "Look, let's compensate the Southwest." We agreed. We compensated the Southwest. I've also said so. That's part the fact that we have Section 14, Subsection 3, that talks about that whatever government and its agencies do should reflect the federal character. That thing has actually helped the North great, tremendously. If you see jump cut off, the cut off of Anambra State is not the cut off of Brunu, it's not the cut off of Imo. We pay that due. Our people are denied admission just to accommodate the North. If you go to the recruitment into the civil service, our people that do perform better in exams are deprived of opportunity in order to carry every section of the country along. So if you go to promotion, the same thing. And as I said before, the, even the, um, the criteria for admitting into the recruitment into the military. It was five credits before. It was lower to accommodate the North. We are saying that what was uh, good for the gay should be good for the gender. We are not intimidating the North. North, we are not intimidating you. We are appealing that we know that you have conscience. We know that you appreciate a sense of justice. 
We know that you appreciate the sense of equity. We are pleading with you, if that is what you want. Yeah, well, Allow the South <laughs> East to produce a president of Nigeria, not just that, not just for the sake of peace, equity and fairness. We are also saying that Nigeria is where she is today because of maladministration. Yeah. Uh, see, uh, uh, see, prof, see, prof. wait, wait, wait. <laughs> After the war, the, it, it doesn't matter the amount an Igbo man had in the bank. You will take only 20 pounds. Apart from using hunger as an instrument of war. But within three years, Igbo people came up. Even the money we made through our personal sweat, we use it to develop every part of the country. So the Igbos are asking for justice. The Igbos are asking for equity. He was asking for fairness. We are not intimidating the North. We don't believe in violence. Okay, Prof. Um, the Northerners, I mean, through the ACF, are saying that, look, you must take cognizance of the fact that the North has more population. Mm. And the North, in the past elections, has had more voting power. Mm. The North says it's not aggressively using that power, but it's, it's only telling you that the Nigerian constitution says that any Nigerian is entitled to be president of Nigeria. Mm. And so... You should take cognizance of that. We agree. So are we to jettison the constitution or we should continue with this arrangement of turn by turn Nigeria no, limited no, no. as see, politicians see, see. will say? You see, is then they are consistently inconsistent. When it comes to recruitment, they will invoke section 14, subsection 3. When it comes to uh, admission into university, they will invoke it. When it comes to promotion, they will invoke it. When it comes to allocation of resources, over 70% of resources come from the South. They use that section to give every party a sense of belonging. But when it comes to leadership, they tell you uh, every person should be allowed to vote. We agree. Because of structural imbalance. For example, now let me explain. At independence, we, Nigeria had three regions. Western region, Eastern region, and Northern region. Now, because of the military intervention, today, one northern region has 19 states, while the entire, the remaining two regions have just 17. So that but means... You didn't, you didn't give a full context to it in terms wait, of population. Wait. Because wait. these states are created based on population and landmass. Who determine the population? Who determine the population? So this is, this, this, these are part of the problem. Who determines the thing? The person in government determines the population. The, the structure, that's why we are saying, look, implement the 2014 uh, uh, National, National Conference, Conference report, report because it was done by Nigerians. So whatever any person is talking about uh, population or this, who created that imbalance, structural imbalance? The military, dominated by the North. So it favored them. Come and see today, number of local governments. I'll give you an example. Lagos State, you know, has more population than Kano. Well, what Kano, wait. And today, Kano alone has 44 local governments. Jigawa was carved out from Kano, 33. That is 77 local government. Lagos State has 21. So in terms of distribution 20 of 20 local governments, actually. Sorry? I said 20 local governments. 20 local mm. governments. And the old canal has 77. So where is justice? And that's why and Lagos had to create more local no, governments. And it but wasn't recognized. Not, yeah, recognized it, in the it wasn't recognized simply because, I want to be fair to Chief Olusegun or Basanjo, it was during his tenure. They didn't follow the due process. They stopped at the creation at state level. And, so, and as a good-minded Nigerian, he didn't mind that Lagos, he said, Yoruba man, but he said, no. He sees their allocation. It was under Yaradua that 18.5 billion naira seized by the federal government. The allocation due to local government in Lagos was released. And so we should praise Chief Olusegun Obasanjo for being fair. And I want to ask you this. Yes. Which is the major reason why I asked you to come to the show. Thank if you. If you look at the geopolitics of Nigeria from yes. independence, even before independence, but let me start from independence. Yes. The North 
and the East have always been the best partners when it comes to forming alliances, to form government. Yes. Our very first government in Nigeria was formed by an alliance between the North, which produced Tafawa Balewa yes. as Prime Minister, and, and the Zeke. East, which produced Azikwe yes. as President yes. of the country, yes. or Governor General before being President when yes. he became a republic. Yes. That was the first time we had a very strong alliance and we went into it. Thank but unfortunately, you. in 1964, there was a mix-up here and there. Mm. And of course, due to how the election went in 1964, there was a problem. But there was still some form of alliance there. And then we came to the Second Republic. Yeah. We formed an, another alliance again. The two major political parties uh, that formed these alliances, you look at, for example, the North, going into an alliance with the East to produce a Shagari as president and Alex Ekweme, Alex Ekweme yes. as vice president. Yes. Another second alliance. There. Yes. In 1999, which we have said, because we can't talk about the yes. aborted yes. third republic here, mm. it, wasn't, it wasn't so strong. Yes. In 1999, yes. you have said it here that Alex Ekweme had the opportunity of becoming of becoming uh, of contesting yes. the uh, PDP ticket and likely imagine because he was a former vice president yeah. but he mm. didn't mm. because he wanted this time around the power to be shifted to the southwest yes. now why has it been difficult after these two alliances yes. at independence and second republic yeah. yes to form another alliance with the north since 1999 because buhari has been trying to do that since 2003 by mm. bringing uh, former uh, speaker mm. as his running mate in 2003 mm. that didn't work out he brought Chuba Kadigbo yes. uh, in 2007 that didn't work out yes yet it looks like it's even the southeast that doesn't want to build an alliance again why is it difficult no I, I want to thank you for reminding me of that of 1979 it's because Dibos have always wanted one Nigeria remember in that election MPM led by Shagari scored 5.8 million votes. Actually, um, U, UPN, UPN the, which was the led by Chief of Bafemi Awolo, scored 4 point something million votes. And the MPP, Nigeria People's Party, mm. led by Dr. Nandia Zikiwe, scored 4.2 million votes. Ordinarily, if Zeke had wanted to team up with Chief Obama Femi Awolo, Shagari wouldn't have been president. We made that sacrifice and we want Northern elders to recognize it. Even the 1999 you are talking of, uh, at the same time, you know that at that time, uh, Bob Femi Awolo had gone to court. Ziki called him and appealed to him. And Shagari was warning. Obasanjo also cooperated and allowed him to of government to go on. This is the sac a great sacrifice on the part of the Igbos. Because it is, if, if Zeke had teamed up with Awolo, Shagara wouldn't have been president. And that's because where your problem wait, actually wait, lies wait, with the wait, Southwest. You asked me a question. No, 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 to no. You asked me you. a question. Buhari actually nominated our two sons. Uh, Umezo, Chief Edwin okay. Umezo, okay? Yeah, and then Dr. Chubo Kadibu, you know, as running mate. The Igbos are business minded. The Igbos don't hate Buhari, but the Igbos surveyed the ground and felt that they needed somebody that is, is business-minded. That's why the Igbos didn't vote for Buhari. Not that the Igbos never had a meeting. They said, look, they examined them. And you know, Igbos... Well, there were so many groups in the no, South East that were no. all out see, campaigning see, against uh, Buhari. I, I, no, 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 no. That. If the Igbos <laughs> had a meeting, and took a decision on this. I will tell you, the boss never discussed it. But people assessed them. Vice doesn't have much power under the Nigerian constitution. They felt that although their sons on two occasions were running mad, they will not do much. That Buhari is not a business-oriented man. And they, you know that they hated the North. They voted for state not, but another person. And so this time around, all these things, sacrifice the Igbos made, as Arewa, people, and the others, did they come to meet us? They didn't come to negotiate with us. Okay. We I'm asking us, this because we, no, no, you see, have enjoyed the yes. vice presidency twice. Yes. I mean, with Namdi Azikiwe 
being president no, then no, no. that was almost like it was a vice was president ceremonial. yeah it was, it was almost like a vice presidential no. slot he was just ceremonial yeah head. i mean just like we have he wasn't head uh, of and alex Ekwe, man, no, in no, no. the second republic alex also yes. being a ceremonial mm, yes. uh uh you know vice president yes uh, if we may put it that way yes why is it important for the Igbos to have the presidency this time around after having <laughs> tested the vice presidency <laughs> twice if we may thank put you it so that much way. you see there's a difference between if you have a car now, you have a spare tire. A spare tire can only come out when the main tire uh, uh, bust or anything. So as a vice president, he doesn't have much power. He doesn't do anything except the ones delegated. The constitution doesn't delegate any function to the vice president of Nigeria. And so the vice president oppressed at the leisure of the president. The boys are saying things have gone terribly wrong in Nigeria. What did the exchange of rate, rate of Naira today? Today is 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 over five hundred and eighty. Five eighty. Good. To a dollar. Is that where it should be? And as a lecturer, having an Igbo president will, will wait, resolve that. As a professor, <laughs> a cleaner in the U.S. earns more than I. As a professor, a, a driver in America earns more than I. Than I. That is not just insecurity everywhere. So having an Igbo president will resolve you, that because you if don't you have, have an Igbo president, you see what Peter B did in Anambra State today. Anambra State, as a, as a, as a governor, he invested twenty million dollars in a, a business a, 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 in a company. Today is worth over one hundred million dollars. Interesting. Uh, yes. So what, what company if is you, that? Uh, I think. Bar. I won't remember oh, the exact, okay. but yes, even yeah. the current governor, you know, even announced it that the investment now worth one hundred million uh, dollars. Yeah. That shows you the kind of we have quality presidential aspirants in Igbo land across A parties. Across parties. Okay, so just if you We're allow us that opportunity, Nigeria will start smiling again. Now, I just want you to talk about Buhari's visit to a Boeing state. A Boeing within the Southeast politics yes. is always seen as the orphan of the Southeast states. Yes, yes. <laughs> but here we have a Buhari yeah. relating more with David Umayi of yeah. a Boeing state, visiting there twice now, uh, staying there. What's the magic? And uh, do you by chance think that maybe he may have anointed uh, David uh, no. <laughs> Umayi no, 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 for no. something? No, I, I don't <laughs> believe that. We are happy that he visited the boy, at least to show that the Igbos love him. No person attacked him, whether you talk of IPOB or ESL, no person tried it. Let it not be that the person didn't succeed. We are happy that Mr. President came to Igbo land yesterday. The Igbos like him, okay? Now, that visit is good. You can also see that Igbo leaders met him, maintaining one request. Because the insecurity in the Southeast cannot be resolved outside the release. Uh, if you do not release the Igbo youths, including Nam no. de Kalo, that are being detained. Yeah, but because Buhari has replied no, no, that there's no, no, already no, no, no. a court no, process. No, You can't circumvent the court no. process. As your father, Buhari should do better than that. What do we expect as, him as to do? To ask the court to stop the case? Political solution. Political solution. Buhari, as the president, can ask the court, Grand Nam de Carlo Bell. And that is what we're asking for. Well, the, if the president wait, is ordering the court, do you think we're no, practicing no, 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 democracy? No, he can advise. We know. Or the, you, uh, you no, would, no. Uh, the president can advise. You would want to say you should speak with the attorney no, general no, no. of the federation no, no, to no, ask no. for the case to be withdrawn. Is that no, what you're saying? Uh, attorney general is an appointee of Mr. President. He cannot do that without the president. I want to give you an example. Very quickly, because we have less when than the case in the, with the um, Niger Delta youths, when we had a problem, Obasanjo invoked political solution, and it worked. Even when uh, Owazrike was arrested, mm. his case was in court. Obasanjo, as a president, he was very considerate. Igbo leaders met him. He came up with political solution, and the government was granted bail. Eventually, he's free. Mm. We are saying today, if Mr. President will be kind enough and considerate enough to grant Nam de Kal and the others, Grant them bail. That is political solution. Well, and see, <laughs> I don't think see, you... the Ebony State governor, 
directed or harnessed. A Boris State governor is the leader of the political. Uh, that is the chairman of the Southeast Government yes, Forum. Yes. So for him, this is we are talking of political solution, and I'm asking the governor of a Boris State to lead the other governors to meet Mr. President. Okay. Or Haneze will come. So for him to push the ball to Haneze, or Haneze will be. Mbazlika, which is about 94, going to, uh, 93, going to 94, 94 years. Yeah. He has come here with uh, Dr. Yeah, I mean, the last time where yes, they all went to visit so uh, President Buhari. We, we had, and we've been soliciting for that. Even today, we demanded, we appealed again. So for any person to say Ohaneze, Ohaneze has been trying. Oh, okay. We Very want the quickly. governor to lead his fellow governors mm -hmm. To answer rock. Very quickly, the yes. Igbo leaders uh, lobby President Buhari for mm. uh, the 2023 elections, too. Yes. I mean, uh, maybe to try to do something in the APC for them, mm. very briefly. Just like you're asking him to do something for Nam Dekano through no, the courts. No, Did you lobby him to yes. actually, you know, do something for you this, uh, to yes. produce a presidential yes. candidate, too? Yes, we've appealed to him. So, Mr. President, have compassion for the people of South East. It is our turn. Mm give you presidential fiat. We know how you handle the emergence of national chairman of APC. Mm. You ask others consensus. And that was how Senator Adamo emerged. We want Mr. President, whatever approach he wants to adopt, how he has ensured that Adamo from North Central emerged as a national chairman of APC. Let him do the same thing and see that an Igbo son of Southeast extraction emerges as the president of Nigeria in 2023. What? I wish I had him. <laughs> you, are, you are attributing to Buhari some of the yeah. powers that I don't think he has. He, ha he has. I mean, well, it will uh, be very where difficult did, where for did he get party the power? members where? to accept some of no, these no, no, things. No, no, no. Where well, did he get the power? I'm being to told that, that we don't have that. enough time. <laughs> Professor Charles Mekiaku is the secretary of the Igbo <laughs> Elders Consultative yes, Forum, yes. and you have laid out your demands here. We just yes, hope that yes, Buhari yes. is listening. Fortunate yes. enough, he's back to Abuja. We must thank you for being on the show. Well, that's how it's been for this edition of the Rise interview. Do join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Goodbye and thank you for watching. I'm Somna Sambu.